you've seen uh, this slide several times uh, as we've gone throughout the semester, as we move from relational to column family to document to graph, and now to our final uh, genre of database management systems, key value databases, and in particular, Redis. So Redis is a key value database, and uh, the real reason for Redis to exist is to have very simple data access that can uh, operate with a very, very high level of performance. So uh, like I mentioned before, Redis and to a lesser extent DynamoDB uh, aren't as much focused on uh, big complex relationships and, and things like that, but they are focused on being extremely fast. So we interact with uh, Redis through a, a set of uh, commands that are specifically to Redis, and we're going to see that uh, these wind up looking quite a bit different than most of our other query languages. It's actually quite a bit more simple uh, than our other query languages. Uh, most of what we do tonight, we're going to be executing these commands through the Redis CLI or command line interface uh, client. However, Redis is, is super easy for applications to get data in and out of because by default, it doesn't require any kind of authentication. It doesn't require any kind of special network protocol or, or, uh, or client uh, or driver to be able to connect. In fact, we can connect to our Redis server uh, just using some very bare bones network utilities like Telnet or even Netcat and what Netcat is, is uh, kind of like when we used curl to, uh, to bring down web page content without having the big heavy overhead of a full web browser. Netcat is kind of the same way, except even a lighter weight network tool in that it just creates a, the minimal essential network connectivity between two machines, and then you can send any data back and forth kind of regardless of the protocol and we can get data in and out of Redis uh, using that very bare bones tool. So it makes it very easy, very fast and very lightweight to get data in and out of Redis, which is kind of a theme that we'll see throughout. Uh, Redis is unique in its, uh, in its speed and also that generally you're not going to be using Redis for uh, persistent or long-term storage. And part of the reason that Redis is so fast is we uh, typically have it configured as strictly an in-memory database, meaning it never writes anything to the hard disk of the server. Everything is just uh, stored in memory, in the RAM. And uh, the nice thing about that is RAM is thousands of times faster than, than a hard disk or, or even faster than a solid state disk. Um, however, the downside to that is when you turn your computer off or if your computer crashes or, or anything like that happens, everything that is in RAM that's in memory uh, is, it disappears, it, it goes away. Um, so not great for persistent storage, but it is great uh, for very fast access. Now, we can configure Redis to write to disk um, either constantly or, or periodically, but there's going to be a performance hit to that and, uh, and generally that's just not what we're using Redis for. And as far as how fast is this performance, uh, typically where we've been talking about database operations taking five or six or 30 or, or however many milliseconds or thousandths of a second, uh, we typically measure Redis operations in microseconds or millionths of a second. Um, and it's not uncommon for Redis databases for you to be able to write to them uh, in excess of 100,000 uh, operations per second, right? So uh, if you're writing 100,000 uh, items per second into your database, that's taking about 10 one millionths of a second to, to write that, uh, which is, uh, you know, maybe a few hundred, if not a few thousand times faster than uh, we would write to uh, many of these other databases. So extremely high throughput. Um, our scalability, however, is a little bit limited due to it being an in-memory database. So we're not gonna scale our Redis database out to be uh, you know, 
hundreds of gigabytes or terabytes or anything like that, uh, it's generally going to be limited by the amount of memory that we have in our server, uh, which with the cloud environments in, in AWS can get up to several hundred uh, megabytes. So I mean, we can get pretty large, but not the type of scale that you might see with uh, something like HBase, where we have uh, our, uh, our HDFS um, storage in our Hadoop cluster or DynamoDB, where we're clustering across uh, thousands of servers or hundreds of servers in Amazon's environment. So it's uh, kind of a specialized tool for some specialized problems. And also kind of along these lines, the um, approach to security in Redis is, uh, is a little bit different than most of our other DBMSs. And as I mentioned before, by default, there is no authentication at all involved with Redis. So no usernames and passwords, uh, absolutely kind of anyone who can reach your Redis server would be able to you know, read data out of it, write data to it, delete the whole thing. Uh, it's uh, a little bit scary. And so the general security model for Redis is that it should be left wide open so you get just the highest performance you can and that you secure your Redis server at the network layer. Right, so uh, you, you set up firewall rules and you set up segregated networks and you may physically isolate this server so that only trusted clients, like maybe a web server or another database server or something like that, is able to reach your Redis server over the network. So straight off of the Redis website, uh, that's what they suggest is that you, know, you uh, you configure a network access control lists, that's what ACL stands for, to only allow you know, your trusted application servers to actually interact with the Redis server. And in fact, we'll see with the Redis instance that we have uh, online right now, which is hosted in AWS ElastiCache, um, it is only going to be accessible from our private uh, AWS network that we've set up for this class and that our uh, MongoDB and Neo4j servers and things like that are running in. So uh, as we go through the demo, what you're going to find is that I'm not able to connect to the Redis server from my computer directly from the machine I'm presenting from right now. I'm actually going to SSH into our MongoDB server. And on the MongoDB server, I have installed the Redis client and I'm gonna use that to connect to the, uh, the Redis server that is hosted in AWS ElastiCache. So you'll see that in, uh, in just a moment. Uh, but before that, a little overview of Redis. We're gonna get into our create, read, update, and delete operations, and then talk about uh, one of the other things that makes Redis kind of special and, and a little bit more than just strictly a key value data store. Um, but that we do have a lot of kind of sophisticated data structures in Redis that allow us to, uh, to do some really nice things.